فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم فقصر بطائفة he goes on to say a group of people have fallen short فحكبوا بإسلام and they labeled Muslims من دلت نصوص الكتاب والسنة والإجماع على كفري a group of people have come and they labeled Muslims a people who Allah and his messenger and the ijma of the ummah have come together they've come and they've said that this person is a believer دلت نصوص الكتاب the kitab the sunnah the ijma all of it points towards this person's kufr they come and what do they do they bring this person into Islam those are ahlul taqsir the second one was وَتَعَدَّى بِآخَرِينَ And another people, shaitan, made them go wrong by going what? They went overboard. فَكَفَرُوا And they made takfir on who? مَنْ حَكَمَ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةُ وَالْإِجْمَاعُ بِأَنَّهُ مُسْلِمٌ They made takfir on people who Allah and His Messenger and the Ijma' have labeled as believers. And look what he said after that. فَيَا مُصِيبَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ مِنْ هَاتَيْنِ الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ Ah, he says. The calamity that is endured by these two parties of people. أَهْلُ الْغُلُوفِ People who have fallen into الْإِفْرَاطِ وَالْتَفْرِيطِ Extreme in exaggeration and extreme in negligence. Allah has made this person a kafir. The messenger made. Ijma' is mun'aqid in this matter. And you come and you say, no, he's a Muslim. Or the opposite. That's a musibah. It's a what? It's a musibah. So this kalab, is, haqiqa is a very powerful statement of the mufti. Also, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taybah says, وَلَا يَجُوزُ It is not permissible. تكفير المسلم to place تكفير on a Muslim بذنب فعله it is not permissible to place تكفير on a believer because of a sin he has done ولا بخطأ أخطأ فيه and not in a mistake that he has fallen into a shortcoming كالمسائل التي تنازع فيها أهل القبلة like the issues that the Muslims differed amongst themselves for example, he fell into the statements of the, the Asha'ira. Or he fell into the statements of the uh, Karrabiyya, مثلاً, and the likes of them. In Bab al Asma'i wal Sifat, and etc. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, It is not permissible for you to make takfir of this person based on this statement. And a shortcoming and a mistake a person has done. You're not allowed to. Abu Hamid al Ghazali, this statement of his that I'm going to read, half of the Hajar brings it in his Fathul Bari. That Abu Hamid al Ghazali said, وَالَّذِي يَنْبَغِي الْإِحْتِرَازُ مِنْهُ Abu Hamid al Ghazali says, one of the things that one needs to stay away from and be very, very distanced and cautious from is what? At-takfiru, the issue of takfir. This is something you need to be very vigilant. It's something that you need to take your time out. As much as you can find a way to get away from it. Because he said, permitting for yourself a person's blood and the person's wealth. The people who are praying towards إلى القبلة. المصرحين بقول لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and who are uttering and saying لا إله إلا الله to permit for yourself their blood and their wealth is خطأ and it's a mistake the people who are praying towards the Qibla like we do and they are also what? they are also saying لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله to go and permit for yourself their blood and to also permit for yourself what? Their wealth. The Sheikh says it's khata'un, it's a mistake for you to do that. 
And then he goes on to say, وَالْخَطَأُ فِي تَرْكِ أَلْفِ كَافِرٍ To leave a thousand disbelievers. فِي الْحَيَاةِ in this world, أَهْوَنُ is more lighter مِنَ الْخَطَأِ فِي سَفْكِ دَمٍ لِمُسْلِمٍ Than spilling a blood of one believer. To leave a thousand disbelievers, let them live, is, weight, is lesser in weight than to kill a believer, one believer. Meaning what he's trying to say is that for you to get it wrong, this person actually did fall into kufr and you got it wrong, then for you to do a mistake in killing him, what is better is that you do a mistake in letting him go. Even if it's a thousand, you've you've done you've done. Pay attention. A thousand people, you did a mistake in takfir on them. You all said they're all believers, but you got it wrong. It's better than to do a mistake in one of them, who is truly a believer, and you killed him. Basically, goes back to the qaida, which is what al khata fi al afwi khayrun min al khata fi al uqubah. Doing a mistake in forgiving is better than doing a mistake in what. In punishing, the punishment can be whether it be lashing, whether it be stoning, whether it be killing, all of that. And of course, the qaida idra al hudud bi shubuhat. This is not authentically transmitted from the Prophet. It is weak narrations, but it is a qaida min qawaid al fiqhiyah from the qawaid al fiqhiyah that the scholars mention, which is to repel any punishment, any capital punishment, to repel it with what. By any doubt there is, any speculation, the minimum speculation there is to repel it. The third type of مظاهر الغلو The third type of, and this one my beloved brothers, the issue of الغلو في التكفير Inshallah ta'ala, I am going to be إذن الله الكريم do a series called ضوابط التكفير Principles of التكفير, more details. This is just a, a, a very small amount. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala, this one needs to be spoken about a lot. Because we see the time and the era that we're living in, it has become very, even the one before that, which is al-ghulu fi salihin inshallah ta'ala, I hope to do a session and a series on that, bidni lillahi al-kareem as well. The third one is al-ghulu fi tabdi'i wal-hajr. Extremism in labeling a person an innovator. And also boycotting a person. There's also an extreme on this as well. There's extreme in exaggeration, and there's also extreme in what? In negligence. There's a group of people who will label a person mubtadi' so fast. And there's also another group of people that no one to them is a mubtadi'. Rather, when they hear that word mubtadi', they become very agitated and annoyed. So we find extreme on both spectrum. al ghulu al ifrat wa tafriyat the same the same is with the issue of al hajar the issue of boycotting we find extreme on both spectrum one being extreme in seeing that any any person who falls into innovation automatically by default he fell into innovation khalas boycott him without looking at al dawabit al sharia which we're going to speak about and another group of people Anything that a person falls into, and any mistake that a person comes with, there's no such a thing as boycotting. Everything for them is our taqwa wa ithmi wal udwan. So they give they give it very nice titles. This is called al ghulu fi tabdi'i wal hajr. Both are extreme. Both parties and both groups are extreme. Al-Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, and other than him, Rawa al-Imam Ahmad wa ghayruhu. Al-Imam Ahmad narrated, and other than Imam Ahmad, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and Al-Bani authenticated it, that the Prophet said, Shiraru ibadillahi al-mashaa'una bin namima, al-mufarriquna bayna al-ahibba, al-baawuna al-buraa'a, al-anat. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the evilest, Slaves of Allah are those who walk on this earth spreading news amongst the believers, tale bearers, 
المفرقون بين الأحبة هو dividing loved ones they bring in division and this unity amongst loved ones they go to one land and they want the scholar from Ahl sunnah here to dislike another imam of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah from another land they want to bring this unity amongst the ulama and between the talabatul ilm and the students of knowledge or even the amatul nas who love one another family members all of that falls under this al-baghuna al al anat those who seek to find faults in, a, in one who is free from it trying to attribute to him shortcomings and faults and this is uh, the worst slaves of Allah as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said and that is exactly this issue of الغلوف التبديع والهجر a person whose whole job is to go overboard an exaggeration in placing tabdi on a person that to the extent subhanallah that when a person falls into innovation he becomes happy he says alhamdulillah alhamdulillah instead of becoming sad and thinking to yourself that this brother of mine has fallen short he has fallen into innovation he is in a state of danger and being worried that you've just lost an individual. You become happy. This is, it goes against how a believer should be like. Also, Abu Bakr ibn al-Khalal, in his book Kitab al-Sunnah, he narrated from an Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal that he said, Bisanad al-Sahih, an authentic chain of narration. That Imam Ahmad said, إخراج الناس من السنة شديد Taking the people out of the sunnah by taking them out of the fold of Ahl sunnah is a very severe issue. It's a very serious matter to say that so-and-so is not from Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and that so-and-so is from the Ahl al-Bid'ah, the people of innovation. This is something very heavy, Imam Ahmed said. إخراج الناس من sunnah taking a person out of the sunnah and making him part of Ahlul Bid'ah, he said it's shadeedun, it's a very severe matter. It's a matter that requires a ta'anni wa tarawi wal It requires observation and it requires time, not an emotion and ignorance. And Imam Abu Qasim al taymi rahimahullah in his kitab Al-Hujjah fi Bayani al-Mahajjah, in the chapter of Babu Ijtinab al-Bid'ah wal Ahwa. He says, وَأَمَّا مَا اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْمَسَائِلِ الْإِجْتِهَادِيَّةِ وَالْفُرُوعِ الدِّينِيَّةِ فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا يَصِيرُ, لا يصير بِهِ مُبْتَدِعًا وَلَا مَذْمُومًا مُتَوَعَّدًا Abu Qasim al taymiyyu he says, As for the issues that the scholars differed within themselves, there are a difference of opinions here. And it's a mas'ala based on ijtihad. Ijtihad means that each party is using evidences from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. But when the discussion between the scholars is that one party is using evidence, whereas the other party is not using evidence, this is not known as ijtihad. ولذلك the poet he said, وَلَيْسَ كُلُّ خِلَافٍ جَاءَ مُعْتَبَرًا إِلَّا مَا كَانَ لَهُ حَظٌ مِنَ النَّظَرِ Not every difference of opinion that comes is given consideration. The only khilaf that's given consideration is that which deserves to be looked at. Meaning the one that has evidences on the side of both parties. So he says, if difference of opinion occur amongst the scholars, and this mis'ala is ijtihadiyya, and it is a sub-branch of the religion, then a person doesn't become an innovator by taking one of those opinions. So the difference of opinion here, scholars have differed on this issue, one, part, one party take the right and another party go and take the left, or this issue is a sub-branch. Whichever of the opinions that you take, this doesn't take you out of the fold of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Not only that, وَلَا مَذْمُومًا مُتَوَعَدًا Rather, you are not blameworthy and you're not to be, somebody should, does not have the rights to scare you with the hellfire. Because it is a mas'ala based, based on ijtihad. Now, this is very important because we're talking about the issue of الغلوف التبديع والهجر Extremism in labeling a person innovator or labeling them or boycotting them. 
from the issues that are ijtihad. Ijtihad means what? What I just explained is the issue of al jarh wa ta'adil. If a scholar comes and says this person is an innovator and says this person is misguided, this opinion of this scholar is not a qat'i dalil, a clear cut evidence that everybody has to submit to. This is known as what? Ijtihad. Aqwal al ulama fi al jarh wa ta'adil. The statements of the scholars when it comes to criticism and when it comes to praise is or them speaking about each other, criticizing one another or fi kalami ba'dihim fi ba'din is a amrun ijtihadiyun it is a ijtihadi related matter yaqbalu al-isabata wal khata and it can take it can take correctness one party can be correct and one party can and it can also take wrong in other words, it falls under the hadith of the Prophet. That if the mujtahid strives in a matter, and then when he strives in that particular matter, he gets it right, how many rewards does he leave with? He leaves with two. And if he gets it wrong, he leaves with how many reward? One. So the scholar is in between two or one, because he's a mujtahid. He has the rights to do ijtihad. Pay attention. But this statement of this scholar regarding this person is an ijtihad. And since it's an ijtihad, if a group of people agree with that scholar and they say, Naam, I'm with this great scholar and I can see where he's coming from. They don't have rights to say to the other group, you have to submit to the opinion of our shaykh regarding this person. Reason being, this is a mas'ala which is, not, is known as what? Masailul ijtihad. Goes back to the statement of Abu Qasim al taymi which I mentioned. وَأَمَّا مَا اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ مِنَ الْمَسَائِلِ الْإِجْتِهَادِيَةِ وَالْفُرُوعِ الدِّينِيَةِ فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَا يَسِيرُ بِهِ مُبْتَدِعًا I can't become an innovator just because I've chosen not to take the view of your scholar in this person that he has labelled as an innovator. And I can't see you as an innovator because you have chosen to take the opinion of that scholar who said that this person is an innovator. Are you with me? Because the matter goes back to what? الْإِجْتِهَادِ and this is very important because because of this, a lot of Ahlul Sunnah and Salafiyyin have become divided on that. And they've turned backs on each other and don't give each other salams and don't pray with each other. Rather, Ibn Abdul Barr rahimahullah mentions a very powerful statement. He says, Inna man sahat adalatuhu. Anyone whose integrity is in place, he's a just person. وَثَبَتَتْ فِي الْعِلْمِ أَمَانَتُهُ and it has become clear his knowledge in this, relig in, in this religion. It's become clear that he's a man of knowledge. His understanding of the religion has become clear to the people. وَبَانَتْ ثِقَتُهُ وَعِنَايَتُهُ And his reliability has become clear. That he's a reliable person. He doesn't lie. Nor does he lie about worldly matters. And he definitely doesn't lie about the religion. لَمْ يُلْتَفَتْ إِلَىٰ قَوْلِ أَحَدٍ Any person who then comes and tries to criticize that scholar is not given any consideration. Ibn Abdul Barr is saying this. Illa unless an yatiya he comes with fi jarhihi in his criticism bayinatin adilatin that he comes with evidences that are just and fair, clear cut points. Yasihu biha jarhu that has rights for him to be criticized for. Hmm. We look at it, we say, wow, you brought valid points, strong points. Qala Allah, qala al Rasul, ijma'at. Not masail dhaniya, doubtful matters or unclear issues. Are you with me, brothers? Before that, we weren't going to look at it because what, what was in place? His integrity and his honor and his knowledge and his respect and how high the ummah are there looking at him as an imam. We don't believe our scholars are infallible and errorless. We believe they can be wrong and they can be criticized. <coughs> but so far, what stands is his nobility. Now, when this other scholar wants to come and, and show that he's wrong and he's incorrect, or he wants to criticize him, the criticism that he's going to bring has to be of very strong uh, weight. And it has to be clear. And it has to be just. The reason why he's saying just is that, if there's, and he's going to mention this soon, inshallah, is that if there's any indication that shows us that you're coming because you're in Hanbali and he's a Shafi'i and you have something towards the Shafi'iyah, there's a Ta'asub Madhabi. You have fanatic Tamadhub in you, or you are racist and you have discrimination in you, Mathalan. Then in this regard, whatever you say is not going to be fairly looked at. Turn a blind eye. 
He says, if there's a qareena that shows that, he says, he says it here. He says, يَصِحُ بِهَا جَرْحُهُ عَلَىٰ طَرِيقَةِ شَهَادَاتِ وَالْعَمَلِ No, Tajuddin al-Subki says that. Tajuddin al-Subki says that statement. That if there's any evidences that show that this person is doing this out of ta'assum madhabi, or is the qareena that shows, then it's not taken into consideration. It's consideration. Also that this person who's bringing the criticism, he says it has to be what? Al-Mushahadat wal muayana Not that I heard him, I think. Not, uh, sorry, I heard somebody who said this about him. No, that's not enough. You're criticizing him. It has to be, Abdul Barra is saying it has to be Mushahadat. Things that you saw with your own eyes. Things that you observed from him when you went to him and you visited him. Then and this, it becomes valid for us to look into it. Or else... We leave it. Tajuddin al-Subki, rahimahullah, he says, Al-Hadar kull al-Hadar. Be very, very cautious. And tafhama qa'idatuhum. Pay attention to this. This is very powerful. Because a lot of the times, youngsters who really haven't studied and learnt properly, of course, definitely, they didn't take knowledge from the ulama. My teachers to say they just ripped a page out of a book, and that's all their knowledge is. Then they bring quotes and references that they themselves haven't understood. Tajuddin al-Subki, rahimahullah, he says there's a qa'idah that many use, and they go extreme on this, which is al-jarh muqaddamun ala ta'adili, which is that criticism takes precedence over praise. In other words, when a scholar criticizes you, he takes more, he takes precedence over uh, the one who is praising, because the one who's criticizing has knowledge that the one who is praising doesn't have. Now this qa'idah is sahih, it's accepted amongst the scholars, but it's not accepted unrestrictedly. And the problem with our youngsters nowadays when it comes to this issue is that they believe it's unrestricted and they use it unrestrictedly. Subki rahimahullah, he says, Tajuddin al-Subkiyu, he says, Al-Hadar kull al-Hadar, be very cautious and tafham qa'idatum, that you understand the principle of these scholars. Al-Jarh muqaddamun ala ta'adili, that criticism takes precedence over praise. Ala itlaqiha unrestrictedly. But what's the correct opinion is that um, the correct part, the moderation lies in what? Anyone whose leadership, his imam, scholar, he's an imam, has become clear. His integrity has become clear. And those who praise him are large in amount. And it's rare anyone would criticize him. Here it is his statement. And also there is an indication that shows that the one who's criticizing is doing it what min bin madhabi. He's doing it because of his fanaticism towards a particular madhab. Or other than that, Lam ila jahihi. Your criticism is then not looked at. It's not looked at. So here what we take from it is that this qa'idah al jarh muqaddamun ala ta'adil is not unrestricted. Okay? Just like the other principle that the other party used. So there's extreme in exaggeration and there's also extreme, as I said, in negligence. There's another group of people who will say, anytime two scholars differ in a matter, they'll say to you, Kalamul Akrani Yutwa wala yurwa. That the statements of the contemporaries, two contemporary people who criticize each other, their statements regarding one another is dismissed because they are contemporaries, they're the same. And this is also not correct. Because sometimes a contemporary person can say about another person who he's level to, but something right. He may say something right. So don't go extreme in exaggeration and don't also go extreme in negligence regarding this issue. Now there's another issue related to this, which is the issue of boycotting. And this is going to be the last point regarding this session, inshallah, which is extreme in, boyc uh, in boycotting. We find many people who, the person is falling into innovation. But now we agree that this person is falling into innovation. I, I just quickly have to mention, what is it that a person, if he does, that will make him an innovator? This is very important. Many people don't tend to understand this. If the person goes against Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in the sources in which the religion is taken from, such as the person says, I don't want to take the Quran, or I don't want to take the Sunnah, or I don't want to take the consents, Okay, the consent here being the consent of the companions. He said, I don't want to take any of those three. Or I don't want to take any one of them. Okay, he becomes an innovator straight away, automatically. He's an innovator. He can even become a kafir because of it. 
Also, if the person says, it's the same point again, yeah? It's the same point. Which is that if the person says, I don't take singular narrations in Aqidah, he also becomes an innovator. Because Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they take the Sunnah unrestrictedly in every place, whether it be fiqh, whether it be Aqidah. So there's nothing distinguishing between whether it's fiqh or whether it is what? Aqidah. Just like in Aqidah that we take multitude narration, we take also singular narration. Just like we take in fiqh, multitude narration, we take singular narration. They're both the same to Ahlul Sunnah. So if somebody comes and says, oh, I only take multitude narration, mutawatir in Aqidah, and I don't take ahad in Aqidah, it becomes an innovator. Do we establish the proof on this person? No, we don't. Establishing the proof is not required. This is very important. If he goes against Ahlul Sunnah in what? The masadir al The source in which they take their religion from. That's one. The second thing is that the person becomes an innovator is that Al-Ijma'at Ahlul Sunnah Ahlul Sunnah have consensus in things And these are, I mentioned before, they are five particular matters Which is Al-Asma'i Wal-Sifat Al-Wa'd Wal-Wa'id Al-Sahaba Al-Qadai Wal-Qadr And Asma'i Wal-Ahkam Those five, and we've already spoken about them These five issues are Five basail ajma'ali ahlul sunnah. Ahlul sunnah have a consensus in these five. Are you with me, brothers? This is, it's very important we understand this. That these five, Allah's names and attributes. Second one is Allah ta'ala, the promises and the warnings that He gives. The third is the, the companions and their, the rights that they have on us. Fourth, which is the predestiny, the qada and the qadr, the things Allah has pre, is destined for us. Last but not least, names and rulings like kufr and iman and etc. These five are kulliyatul aqidah. They are the ru'us. If you open any aqidah book, you will find that they, they stem from these five. All of them, all the aqaid, masail, they, they, come that, they come back to these five. The, anyone who goes short on any of this against Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he becomes an innovator because of it. But does the proof have to be established on him or not? Naam. He has to be informed that he went against Ahlul Sunnah in one of these five. If the proof hasn't been established on him yet, to label him as an innovator is incorrect. To label him as an innovator is incorrect. You have to establish the proof on him. Okay? But when it comes to the Masadir al-Talaqi, al-Kitab wa sunnat wal ijma that doesn't require establishing proof on him. That doesn't require it. If he says, I don't take the Quran, or I don't take the Sunnah, or he says, I don't take the Qabr al-Ahad, this is now becomes an innovator without the proof having to be established on him. And that, inshallah ta'ala, requires another session on breaking down all of that. But now, let's say we agree that this person is an innovator now. Methanan. Boycotting is something that stems from establishing that he is that he's an innovator, first of all. So once it's been established that this person is an innovator, boycotting comes after that. But the question here is that because he has become an innovator, does it automatically mean that we boycott him? No. Pay attention to this point. It's important. He became an innovator, so we boycott him straight away. It's not like that. It's not straight away like that. Okay? The reason is because the boycotting it, it, it surrenders and it has to be observed through the principles of the religion before you go forward in boycotting. So you don't fall into So you don't fall into extreme exaggeration nor do you fall into extreme exagger exagger uh, negligence. There are a group of people, automatically you fell into innovation. Naam. Ah. Then you're a mubtida. I'm not going to sit with you. I'm going to boycott you. Automatically. Another group of people, you fall into bid'ah. Don't care. I'm your friend. I love you. You're my brother. I'm your brother. Khalas. That's another extreme. Both parties are extreme. These four, these four points have to be observed when it comes to boycotting the innovator. They are as follows. One, al الْهَاجِرِ The one who is boycotting has to be very cautious and stay away from what? اِتِبَاعِ الْهَوَى Following your desires. وَلِلْتِبَاسِ حُضُوضِ النَّفْسِ It shouldn't be for your personal 
you, you're not doing it for a personal rage that you have against this person. Some people, they only believe you're an innovator because they don't like your personality, مثلاً, or they don't like how you look, or they hate you for another reason. They asked you for money one day, and you said, I can't give it to you. And they saw you later with a, giving money to somebody else, just because that you're a mubtidi' now. It shouldn't be that. Because boycotting is a, a righteous deed, and every righteous deed requires, it requires two pillars. What is it? Al-ikhlas wa mutaba'at al-rasul. It requires sincerity, and it requires following the messenger in it. Are you there? So the person has to have sincerity in this act. He has to have what? Sincerity. As the poet said, إِخْلَاسُ لَا لِلَّهِ صَفِّ الْقَلْبَ مِنْ إِرَادَةٍ سِوَاهُ فَحْذَرْ يَا فَطِنْ That you have to have sincerity in your action that you are doing. Also, you have to follow the Prophet in it. You can't just boycott the way you want. You have to do it in how the Prophet did it. So the second one is what? The second one is أَن يَتَثَبَّتَ وَيَتَبَيَّنَ أَنَّ مَا وَقَعَ فِيهِ الْمُخَالِفُ دَلَّةِ النُّصُوصِ وَالْأُصُولِ الشَّرْعِيَةِ عَلَى بِدْعِيَتِهِ وَكَوْنِهِ مَعْصِيَةً مِنْ جِهَةٍ وَأَيَتَيَقَّنَ مِنْ جِهَةٍ أُخْرَى أَنَّ الْمُخَالِفُ قَدْ وَقَعَ فِيهَا فِعْلًا The second one is that verification. You verify. You make sure that this person in front of you, that you want to boycott, that really they fell into innovation. Are you there? You actually verify that he fell into it, that he did actually do it. And again, I said this goes back to what? Al Mushahadat wal Mu'ayala. It goes back to seeing anything that's through YouTube or whatnot, that's enough. That's not enough. Ya Ikhwa, this is hukum, shara'i, you're going to place on a person. And because of that, a lot of rulings are going to come from it. When you say this person is an innovator, you're saying that he's going to be from the 72 sects that are going to be in the hellfire. It's not a light term that you're going to use regarding this person. So you need to verify to the T that this person has really fallen into this. It's in our Sharia, our brothers' names have rulings. They're not just random terms. Kafir, Mubtadi', Zalim. All of these terms have rulings. Zani. You don't, can't just use that term at somebody. You call this person a Zani, he gets lashed for it. Or you get lashed for doing Qadful Muslim. But we take these terms very lightly. You say this person is a kafir, his wife's going to be separated from him. He's not going to be buried with the Muslims. He's going to be killed. And etc. comes out from this. So using this word kafir requires observation. Taharri wa ta'anni. So the four, third one is that. The third condition that needs to be observed. I mean, the third principle is. You look at what type of innovation did he fall into. And what type of innovation is he actually in. Because the person who has innovation but doesn't call to their innovation is not dealt the same with the person who calls to his innovation. There's a difference. The ulama, they're different. He does innovation but he does it in his house. He keeps it private. It's, it's on a private level. Just like the person who does sins but they do their sins private. You're not allowed to bring it out. Even if you see a text message of his. Even if you see one day his curtain opens and you see some, him doing something. You are not allowed to talk about it. It's private. It stays private. Stays what? It stays private. So you look at the type of innovation he's coming with. Is it the bid'ah? Some of them are bid'ah mufassaqah. Some are bid'ah mukaffara. Some bid'ah is fisq, is sins. So he just he's a he's, he's a Muslim innovator. But sometimes what does he become? He becomes a kafir because of this innovation. Some innovations are kufr. So the person leaves the fold of Islam through it. So you need to observe what type of innovation it is. Now, a person falls in an innovation, in a matter, does he become, do you deal with this person's innovation to the innovation of a person who's doing so much other innovation? Are they the same to you? Or do you give them different levels? All of these have to be observed. The fourth, which is the last one, is that يُرَاعِ الْمَقَاسِدِ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ مِنَ الْمَصَالِحِ وَالْمَفَاسِدِ الْمُتَرَتِّبِ عَلَى الْهَجْرِ the last one, which is that you observe the objectives of the Sharia. You observe the, the harm that comes from this boycotting. If I boycott him, will he even become even worse? Maybe by not boycotting him, he might, be, he might come back. I might realize what he's doing is wrong. So maybe I just should be around him more often and give him advice. I have to look at that. I also have to look at my type of influence that I have. Am I a person who can influence are you with me? 
If you're trying to boycott, for example, the, the, the mufti of a country, and you're just who? A small one person. When you're boycotting, change the mufti who the whole country submit to. La. So what we look at, we look at, as Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah mentioned, اختلاف الأماكن, the differences of places. Are you at a place where the sunnah is strong and the innovators are weak? Then of course, if you boycott them, they're going to feel pain. Are you there? Or, the place, the innovators are stronger and the, uh, the people of the sunnah are weak. Do you boycott in this situation? This is what you have to observe. So it's not like he fell into innovation, I caught him, so I'm going to boycott him now. That's not how it works. So inshallah ta'ala, that's the last point when it comes to mazahir al Um When it comes to mazahir al ghulu Before I conclude, it's important that once these four conditions have been met and they are intact, that this person is boycotted and he is left. And you don't use it as an argument, Ya Akhi, ta'awanu ala al birri wa taqwa. Because then you fall into exaggerate, uh, sorry, extreme in negligence. So, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude there, bi idhnillah al kareem. Anything that I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.